Remember to test out your colors on your draft drawing first. Once you're happy with how they tested out, you're going to set this drawing off to the side and look at it as you start to add color to your metal. Start by choosing the Sharpies that are closest in color to your draft. Remember, you are welcome to use your own Sharpies if you want colors that are different from the ones that are available. If you want to check out your colors, grab your scrap piece of metal that we did the embossing practice on and test out the colors of the Sharpies before applying them to your final artwork. When you start to add color, start by tracing the outside edge of the area that you want to add the color. This will give you a nice smooth edge to your color um, and help to make it look nice and neat. Once you have the marker applied neatly to the edge of the metal, then you can go back in and fill in the center much more quickly. Try to color in the same direction in case any of the coloring strokes show up in your final artwork. Try rotating the metal in order to get the best angle for coloring. Remember, you want to make your coloring look neat and intentional. For the pencil, I colored it the starting colors, and then I decided that it needed an outline with my black Sharpie in order to help show the details. So you might try your color first and then determine if you need an outline to help things stand out. Be careful when you're coloring next to another color. Sometimes that color can bleed into the other area. So for example, when I was adding the green border to it, I was picking up the black and the pink. So I got a piece of scrap paper that I could then clean the tip of the Sharpie on and then start coloring once the color returned to the bright green. One of the things that I noticed with coloring is that the teal that I had was not nearly as bright as my colored pencil, so there wasn't enough contrast. So then I tested out a few other colors on the metal, and I decided that I liked the purple the best. So to remove the other colors, I took a paper towel and a little bit of hand sanitizer, and I uh, wiped off the colors that I no longer wanted in those areas. Then I worked in a different area while I let that area dry, and then I came back and colored it in with the colors that I decided I wanted to use. So for example, now I'm coloring the handles of the paintbrush in purple, and then I touched up the green background that had wiped off when I wiped the handle of the brush off. If you have a very small spot, you can also take a dry erase marker and color over the top of the Sharpie and then wipe it off with the paper towel. I didn't catch this on camera, but it is another way that you can kind of clean up areas of your design as well. Think about what part of the Sharpie you are using. In larger areas, you can use the side of the Sharpie, like when I was coloring the G, but here in the book, I wanted to make sure that I was just using the point of the Sharpie to get into the grooves of the pages. Now, one of the things that you really want to be careful with is when you're coloring that you don't catch the dimension, other areas of the dimension, with the edge of your Sharpie and add color where you don't want it to be. If by chance that happens, again, you could use one of those techniques to wipe it off, or you could extend your outline a little bit to help to include that area and to make it feel like a more smooth colored area. Again, remember you want to repeat your colors throughout your artwork. So for example, I ended up adding this light blue instead of using the teal. And so I decided to use the light blue again in the cover of the book, in the dots by the Gilroy, and then also at the top in the music notes. So try to repeat your colors multiple times and have them spaced out throughout your design in order to create a balance in the colors that you use. Like the illuminated letters and the gold leafing that was used in those, we want to make sure that we leave some of the original metal colors showing in our design. This will help to add that shine like the original illuminated letters. So I chose to leave um, the negative space around the G, uh, the silver of the metal, and also the pages of the book. You want to be careful though that you don't leave all of your metal um, the original color because then you don't have enough contrast or color to draw attention to your. So you want to find a balance. Try to keep the amount of metal showing half to a third of your space. One final thing to note, if you make changes from your original um, sketch, that's okay. So you'll notice I made some alterations as I was going um, based on what I was seeing with the colors and how they were looking with the metals.